An SL sports car has been part of the Mercedes-Benz lineup since the early 1950s. And when I think of that model, I think of that golden years of Hollywood movie star with the great hairstyle, Yul Brynner, driving his 300 SL Roadster along the French Riviera in the late 50s. Or Sophia Loren being regularly photographed with a 300 SL Gullwing Coupe. Over seven iterations and more than seven decades, the SL has stood for performance, glamour and exclusivity. And now after a two year hiatus, the Mercedes AMG SL63 has made a comeback to the Australian market. This new formatic all wheel drive SL63 features AMG's four litre twin turbo V8, superseding the previous rear wheel drive SL's 5.5 litre unit. And rather than a strict two seater, this time around the SL offers the flexibility of occasional plus two seating in the rear. The guideline is for people up to 1.5 metres tall, but I played with the seats and actually made it work for my 183 centimetre height. Trust me though, it's for short journeys only. At the same time, the hardtop roof has been binned, Mercedes AMG opting instead for a traditional, weight saving, folding soft top. Mercedes-Benz design chief Gordon Wagner started the new model's development from a clean sheet and Mercedes-AMG says not a single component comes from the predecessor SL or any other model such as the AMG GT Roadsters. So I don't know about you but I think this car's proportions are just about perfect. This long bonnet with the twin power domes, steeply raked screen and fat haunches create a wide stance and presence that is just about impossible to ignore. Aggression, as with the sinister headlights and 21 inch rims, is subtly combined with soft curves along the flanks and around the rear. Note the seamless door handles. And it's not all about aesthetics. Active Aero has been integrated into the front apron and retractable rear spoiler. Plus the Z-Fold roof design does away with the need for a separate cover. The interior is sub-zero cool. The design incorporating a couple of screens, this main multimedia one in the centre is nearly 12 inches and another for instrumentation directly in front of the driver. Turbine style air vents at the leading edge of the split level dash and alloy trim elements are a tip of the hat to SL's past and the deft mix of large flat surfaces with complex curves oozes confidence. Priced at a fraction under 375k, the new SL will be battling exotic convertibles like the Lambo Huracan Evo Spider and the Porsche 911 Carrera 4 GTS Cabriolet. Value for money is a relative concept in this part of the market, although equipment highlights include a head-up display, Burmester surround sound audio, ambient lighting, hectares of Napa leather trim, dual zone climate control, an 11.9 inch central multimedia display and 21 inch forged alloy rims. There's a lot more, so check out my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au for the full rundown. At just over 4.7 metres long, the new SL is a sizeable machine and much of its lengthy wheelbase is dedicated to making the driver and front passenger as comfortable as possible. And with that, practicality runs to some Little bins in the doors, not quite big enough for bottles, I'm afraid. However, there is a pair of cup holders in the center console. There's also the ubiquitous lidded bin in the center console, which doubles as an armrest and a decent sized glove box. As mentioned earlier, the rear seats are very tight and very much for occasional use. But talk to any Porsche 911 Carrera driver and they'll tell you how handy they can be. And there are in fact Isofix mounting points on the two rear seats and the front passenger seat so you can fix a, a, a child seat or a baby capsule when you need to. That said, there's nothing else there in terms of cup holders. You're on your own once you're in the back of this car. Boot volume is 240 litres with the roof up and 213 litres with it folded. There's a 12 volt socket back there, but the spare is a repair inflator kit only. The new SL is powered by a version of AMG's four litre twin turbo V8, as is usually the case, built by one AMG technician, in this case, Julian Reinholdt. It produces more than 400 kilowatts, in fact, around 580 horsepower and 800 Newton meters of torque. It's something of a modern masterpiece, 
and the previous seven-speed auto transmission, driving the rear wheels only, has been replaced by a nine-speed dual-clutch auto, sending drive to all four wheels via Merck's Formatic all-wheel drive system. Mercedes-AMG's official fuel economy number for the SL63 is 13.9 litres per 100 kilometres. On the roughly 300 kilometre launch program, we covered urban, B-road and some freeway running, returning an indicated average of 17.5 litres per 100 kilometres. And that reflects some enthusiastic driving along the way. The fuel tank requires 70 litres of 98 Ron premium unleaded to fill it, which translates to a theoretical range of around 500 kilometres, dropping to 400 kilometres using our real world number. In terms of performance, I recall driving a previous generation SL65, the twin turbo V12 version, which had a thousand newton metres of torque. And of course, that's enormous. This car has 800 and there comes a time where enough is enough. And I think 800 is enough. There's so much punch under your right foot. Claim zero to 100 uh, kilometres an hour acceleration is 3.6 seconds and the car will storm on to a toupee troubling 315 kilometres an hour top speed. And as you head up through the drive modes, closer to dynamic, sport, race, the engine noise is absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah. And the nine speed dual clutch transmission, especially when you're playing with the steering wheel mounted paddles, delivers really rapid direct shifts. There are six AMG Dynamic Select Drive programs from comfort through to race, the latter including a drift mode, which we didn't experiment with, nor did we dip into the AMG track pace system for circuit focused mapping and timing. However, far from drifting, the grippy Michelin Pilot Sport 4S rubber plants the car securely with the all-wheel drive system and electronic locking rear diff playing their part. The aluminium space frame chassis mixes aluminium alloys with magnesium, fibre composites and different strength steels to create a very rigid platform. In fact, torsional rigidity is claimed to have been increased 18%. You've got aluminium double wishbone suspension front and rear with active damping and adaptive anti-roll bars so you do away with physical anti-roll bars and the car just feels terrific in the corners. I found the perfect setup was in the individual setting with the engine transmission and steering in racier settings and the suspension in comfort. The adaptive damping in this configuration mixes smooth ride compliance with sharp dynamic response. The speed sensitive variable ratio steering feels good road feel is actually really great and there's electronically controlled rear steering which gives you an element of toe in at the rear up to 2.5 degrees. So despite its size and mass, it's nearly two tonnes, it feels athletic and dynamic, really responsive when you're uh, on your favourite B-road. As I mentioned, the SL isn't exactly a lightweight, it's nearly two tonnes, but the composite braking system is standard with enormous ventilated rotors, front and rear, clamped by big six piston calipers up the front and singles at the back. The braking performance is amazing. The pedal is really firm and progressive. If you're uh, pushing on, you've got the brakes to do the job. In terms of miscellaneous thoughts, a front lift function, which lifts the nose 30 millimeters for driveways, speed bumps, etc., is standard. Thank you, Mercedes AMG. It makes driving a car like this so much better. There's also standard heated and ventilated front seats standard heated steering wheel and the air scarf function at the top of the seats which warms your neck and the back of your head if the weather gets a bit chilly. So there's no excuses for you not putting the top down when it is inclement. There's also what Mercedes AMG calls magic vision wipers which clears the screen, the fluid that helps you clean the screen going up the wiper arms, no spray, it keeps it super clean really easily. No independent ANCAP safety assessment at this stage, but the SL63 is fitted with the Driving Assistance Package Plus, which includes a heap of active crash avoidance tech, including AEB, active cruise control, tyre pressure monitoring, and many assists 
from active parking to lane keeping, and the airbag count runs to eight, including side bags for rear occupants. For all the safety details, read my written review at carsguide.com.au. The SL63 Formatic Plus will be covered by Mercedes-AMG's five-year unlimited kilometre warranty, with roadside and accident assistance included for the duration, both of which are expected in this category. Maintenance intervals are 12 months, 20,000 kilometres, and a fixed price service plan lists an average of $1,583 for each of the first three visits to the workshop. Not out of line in this part of the market. The new Mercedes-Benz AMG SL63 4Matic Plus is guaranteed to be turning heads for decades to come. But there's enormous design and engineering substance underpinning this car's undoubted good looks. Stunning performance, superb dynamics and top shelf quality make it a powerhouse GT to be reckoned with. Schön Auto.